Hey everyone, it's Nelson Miller here. I'm the creator of the Divi Contact Form Helper plugin. And today I'm excited to announce another big update, version 1.4 with a lot of new features. Let's take a look, everything that's new. All right, so we'll start with this HTML anything field. So it's basically how it sounds. It's an HTML field, but it means you can put anything in it. So you could write heading text, you could write paragraph text, you could add images, divider lines, bullet lists, number lists, quotes, links, you, um, you know what I mean, just everything that you can do in a text editor, you can do. And now keep in mind, this type of field, it, it, nothing would submit, you know, nothing, uh, none of this data is submitting in the form, it's just there in the form as maybe some kind of explainer text, some kind of description that you want the person filling out the form to read or to see or to interact with. So it's, there you go, it's, it's an HTML free for all anything field. And along with that, we have design settings to style all kinds of different aspects of that field, right? So let me jump into the actual module here. So if I add a new field here, I'll go into field options and say use as HTML field. And here I can, you know, write my stuff um, maybe I want a divider. We even added that little horizontal line thing there. You could do whatever you want here. And then in the design tab of that field, right here, you'll see HTML section. And so I could I could style like the main wrapper of that, like the the, the yeah what it's sitting in the entire thing. Any type of headings that I have, you can style paragraph text. If you have links, we even have separate link styling image, so you can do image width and height and aspect ratio, padding, borders, all that stuff, and then the divider. So we've, we've really added a lot of extras here for that HTML field. Uh, next is this interesting little feature. So in the theme options, we added this. And right here, I have the ID of a field that I have in the contact form. So over in the contact form, let me show you that. Right here, name, you can see that the field ID is name right so what I've done is add that here and that's going to add a new column over here when I look at my entries so look here name right here that was added because of adding it in theme options there so by putting the field ID there I now get this column if I want to see the person's name it's optional some people asked to show the name here we didn't have the name as one of the options and when we thought about it, we're like well let's just add the option for you to add other columns so depending on what it was like if you had I don't know like um, a yes or no question or some some question that you want to see right here when you come to the screen instead of clicking into the entry you could add it now separated by commas there in the theme options show asterisks for required fields and this is one of those like head scratchers like why wasn't this a feature before so required fields obviously ever in theme op or field options there is this required field that's in Divi. So this new setting here, show asterisk on front end. So it's, it is showing, so let's go ahead and exit here. I'll show you that real quick. Now here's the thing. So since I don't have the labels enabled, it's showing within the placeholder text. Let me turn on a label and it looks a lot better. And I love using the labels anyway. So show label on front end. Um, we'll just do one, I guess. There, so you can see how it will look. Pretty nice, has the red asterisk, right? So if it's a required field, you know visually right away that it is. So I don't know why that feature wasn't included in Divi, but that's okay, because here we are adding these kind of features for you. All right, now the error or required fields message, like, like if I click here, oh, I can't submit because I didn't fill in these fields. This, this message, well, first of all, you can see we've added design settings, jumping ahead here, but we've added this design setting. But, but get this, we've also had people say that if they have a long form, um, which I can't really demonstrate here, but if this form was longer and you click submit and you're like, oh, it's not going, it's not going, and you're trying to submit it because the form is long and especially on mobile, this, this area here is outside your viewport. So it catches people off guard because you can't see the errors. They don't think even scroll up right away because they're just like, why isn't this going? 
Over here, we've added a new toggle error message. And right in here, it says error message location. It was on top by default, so let's put it on the bottom. Also, while we're here, let me show you the uh, error message text. So right here, you can see this container. This is that light red color. Here I have some padding. Here's the message, like the, the, the main text at the top. You can style that however you want. And the list of items, you can style that also. So now I moved it to the bottom. So let's click here again, and you can see that the bottom, I might want to add some margin to my error message on the top to make it work a little better. But there you go. It's pretty cool, isn't it? Design settings for the error message and moving it were two feature requests that we had. All right, another thing here, rich text editor for the success message. So if you remember in Divi, the success message, all it was was one little tiny input field, not a text area, but an input field, which isn't very helpful, is it? It's just like saying, hey, thanks, we got your message, but it's like, really? Like, that's all you're gonna say? So here's an example of what I set up and you can use, we'll talk about two things here at once, merge tags in this success message also. So you can see that we have like a full rich text editor. You can use HTML, whatever. You can use merge tags, headings, styling, right? All right, it's pretty cool. All right, you can find that in here after submission behavior. And so this is actually not a setting to enable. It just is automatic. It just is. So it's a rich text editor by default. So you could put whatever you want here. And like in my example here, I was saying like, thank you. And then name for the merge tag, because I wanted it to say like the person's name filling out the form and then, hey, we'll get back to you at, you know, email or whatever. The cool thing here is kind of a bonus. You can even include a summary of your form. That was actually a different feature request. And it's funny how sometimes you can like provide a solution for something by another solution. So I wasn't even thinking of creating a summary when we added uh, merge tag support here. But then I realized, I was like, oh, I, this worked great. Cause it's like, here's a summary of your form submission and you know, it has, here's your name and your selections and everything. Pretty cool, I think. It's kind of like three in one here. Um, yeah, I'm, just, I'm excited about it. Lastly here, honeypot for spam protection. So you can go in here to spam protection. There's that normal, you know, use spam protection service like reCAPTCHA, and then the basic CAPTCHA, which we all hate, um, the math, and then our new setting, use honeypot. So honeypot is an invisible field. It's meant so that, you know, spam bots cannot submit an entry. So we've added that. So we're getting into the spam protection and um, we have some other ideas also for uh, spam protection features. As always, you can check our full change log over here. You can see uh, we've added ARIA tags, um, just a couple things that were missed. You know, people are always finding like the most intricate little things like so a few design settings were missing for the file upload. Uh, let's see. Yeah, definitely just little things here. Um, plural for, you know, the files for the language translation, um, number of files selected and an, an issue with the confirmation message when the rich text editor was enabled. Um, and then, yeah, we you can check all the other things that we had recently. All right. So that's it for version 1.4. We actually have about five other features that were almost done, but they, they just weren't quite ready and you know it's it's one of those things do we do we wait and make the update even bigger or just release what we have and we decided to release what was done and so I think that was a good decision and so now you can look forward to the next update and there'll be a lot of other new features coming your way all right well I hope you've enjoyed this update let me know if there's anything else that you want to see we still have a big long development list we now have 76 custom features in this plugin. How crazy is that? All right, we'll see you all in our next video.